A nine to five day is just a dream for a lot of women. Many work a double day slogging away at their job and then going home to clean, cook and look after children. And they're not paid for the second shift. In fact, the work's not even counted. Work is commonly measured by the gross domestic product model and GDP doesn't bother to include work when no money changes hands. So all that toil before nine and after five, all the nappies changed and dishes washed and laundry hung by stay-at-home mums, orthodox economists don't add it into their calculations. They put all that slogging down to choice. Women want to have children, to warm the hearth, to mop grime from the floors. It's a labour of love. But many women disagree and have long been agitating for more. In 1892, Kate Shepherd was outraged that women were called men's dependents. She argued that women performing domestic duties without payment weren't dependent. In fact, many were working harder than their wage-earning husbands. And all these years later, the battle continues. Women still do far more unpaid work than men, and some contemporary economists want it counted. Feminist economist Marilyn Wearing has been challenging the GDP model for decades, exposing flaws in data capturing methodologies and its rigid approach to valuing work. What's the big deal? Well, GDP helps shape policy and even private sector perspectives. For example, work and incomes tools of measurement reflect GDP values. It doesn't count unpaid work as work and denies support to those who are in dependent relationships. But we don't have to use GDP, there are alternatives. The Genuine Progress Indicator accounts for labour outside of the traditional marketplace, and the Human Development Index emphasises the assessment of holistic human development, not just economic wealth. They're not perfect, but at least these models are a step towards a fairer measurement of labour, a move towards recognising the work women do.